This is Dr. Tom with a uh, video on the new CBT Mechanical P exam experience. In this video, I'll take a look at various changes that this new format brings to your experience taking and preparing for this exam. So uh, let's get started. The uh, PE exam is administered uh, by the uh, National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, or NCES. Uh, about uh, 4,000 uh, people take the mechanical PE each year, roughly uh, 3,000 first-timers and about 1,000 repeat takers. It is the second exam towards licensure, the first exam being the FE, or Fundamentals of Engineering exam, which uh, it went to the uh, CBT format in uh, January of uh, 2014. It is uh, part of the three E's of uh, licensure, education, experience, uh, and exam. One of the first things that you need to, to obtain is the uh, NCES Examinee Guide. Uh, it gives you the requirements uh, for lots of things, registration for the exam, things for the exam day. Um, it is uh, realized that it is released a couple of times a year, so you want to make sure you have the latest. Uh, it is uh, uh, have uh, two uh, parts to it. One is the computer-based exam uh, information and also the pencil and paper exam. Uh, so you want to make sure that you uh, are in the right in the right section. Um, this is going to be your uh, PE exam Bible, so to speak, and it should be where you go to answer all your questions about how the PE exam works, registration procedures, and what is and what is not allowed during the exam. Uh, this guide covers the requirements for both, again, the uh, pencil and paper and the CB, so makes CBT, so make sure you uh, are in the right section. Um, and be, be careful to pay attention to what you're allowed to bring and what you're not allowed to bring into the exam uh, facility. That's a very, very careful um, uh, list of things that you need to know. Uh, registering for the exam is uh, actually a two-step registration process. Uh, step one is uh, to apply to your state board and any other required agencies in your state uh, for approval to take the exam. Then step two is to actually register uh, with the NCES to take the PE exam, uh, specifying which of the three ME exams you wish to take. Okay, there are three mechanical exams. Uh, there is the machine design and materials, there's the thermal and fluid systems, and then there's the HVAC, HVAC and refrigeration. Uh, and they are divided up uh, by the NCS uh, specifications into really kind of three areas. There's principles, applications, and engineering practice and support knowledge. The uh, engineering practice sort of falls under the principles section, and the uh, support knowledge falls under the application. Uh, but they, uh, they, both of those form sort of a special group of mostly non-quantitative topics, I call those NQQs, uh, that do not require typically uh, calculations to answer. Now, how those are broken down uh, in the specifications, this is again right from the NCS specification sheets, is for machine design and materials, it's sort of split evenly 40 and 40 between the two. Now, these are mixed up in the exam. There's not just the morning part is principles and the afternoon is applications. Uh, you'll see uh, some of both uh, in both the morning and the afternoon. Uh, for thermal and fluids, they've got 32 questions on principles and then they split uh, hydraulic or fluids and uh, energy power, sort of thermo and uh, heat transfer, things like that, split those uh, 24 each there. Then for the HVAC and refrigeration, 32 for principles, and then uh, 48, uh, the remaining 48 for uh, applications. Now, one of the things that you would want you'll want to get uh, through the uh, your My NCS account, along with uh, other things, is to get the uh, purchase the NCS practice exam. Uh, it'll be uh, your essential uh, part of your preparation because it'll kind of give you an idea of the best indication of what you're likely to see uh, in the exam. Uh, they don't identify which ones are principles or applications, but still, uh, the practice exam is uh, is really uh, a very very important. Uh, resource. 
Okay, with the uh, CBT exams, you can now take the exam uh, year-round at uh, multiple locations on a date you schedule, and you can get your results in typically 8 to 10 days. Uh, you can also take the exam up to three times in a 12-month period uh, with some restrictions, and that restriction is, is you can only take it one time with, within one of the four um, three-month windows, uh, January to March, April to June, July to September, uh, or October to December. Under the pencil and paper, you can only take it twice a year, one on a particular day in the fall and on a particular day, a day in the spring. So. Uh, be aware of that uh, that change in the CBT uh, schedule. Knowing in advance what the experience of taking a CBT P exam will be like is an important consideration because for many people what keeps them from passing is the nervousness generated by the exam experience itself and not their lack of understanding or ability to solve problems. One key change in the exam experience is that the CBT format uses what is called linear on the fly, L-O-T-F, testing, meaning that each examinee will get a different exam. Previously, when the NCES administered the pencil and paper PE exams, everyone in the country took the exact same exam in their discipline. Yes, the questions for one exam cycle would be different from another, but everyone was facing the same changes each time. However, with the CBT exam, you might get a lot of questions in an area you are not very familiar with and the person beside you, or the one who comes in another day, gets just the right number of questions in the areas they are familiar and very few in their weak areas. This sets up a much bigger roll of the dice factor, and I have a minimum of high regard for that philosophy of testing. It will, however, be the case for the CBT format. Knowing this in advance, you can prepare yourself for the possibility that you may get an unlucky roll and realize if your first attempt trips you up, it doesn't mean you're destined not to pass. On another attempt, the dice might fall your way. You need to be prepared to run the gauntlet calmly. To familiarize yourself with that experience, I recommend that you watch the series of NCES YouTube videos that show what happens from the time you arrive at a Pearson View Testing Center to take your exam until you finish. Between ID checks, palm scans, and making sure you're not bringing anything that's not allowed, the check-in procedure is a bit intimidating, so it's good to know what's coming. These videos also give you valuable information on various aspects of managing the computer interface for the exam, including how to search the on-screen handbook, flag problems for review, use hotkeys, and use the on-screen calculator. There have always been rules about what you can and cannot bring into the PE exam, but the CBT format takes that to a new level. The downloadable NCS Examinee Guide contains a list of what items you are allowed to have during the exam. For the CBT exam, this list of allowed items is very limited. Official ID, one approved calculator without the cover, the spare must be in the locker, a key to the locker, a booklet and marker supplied by Pearson View, eyeglasses without the case, a light sweater or jacket, and approved medications. You will be given a pad and a special pen to do all your calculations, which will stay in the exam facility when you have completed the exam. You may ask for additional pads or pens during the exam. That is it. Then there is a long list of items not allowed. Please note that books and notes are included in the list of banned items. That means no outside references whatsoever. Your only reference during the exam is limited to the provided NCES PE Mechanical Reference Handbook PDF that's shown on your computer screen. Once you are escorted to your cubicle and testing console in a small testing room with your work pad and pen, it's time to take the exam while being carefully watched by a proctor over security cameras. The clock starts and will literally count down the seconds until your time is over. You can take breaks, 
but you must be careful not to take longer than the allotted time so as not to eat into your exam time. I discuss the CBT experience in more detail in my Changes Here article on the DTC website. Okay, with the CBT uh, exam format, you're not going to be allowed to take a single reference into the exam with you. Okay, instead you're going to be presented with a searchable PDF of this NCS reference handbook that'll share half of the 24 inch computer screen with the PE exam itself. Um, the official NCS reference handbook uh, is available again for download from the from the NCS, but again you need the uh, NCS my NCS account set up um, and the handbook is uh, is intimidating it's uh, 500 pages uh, over 500 522 I think to be exact however uh, with uh, with each of the three exams uh, 200 pages are for machine design and materials 275 for thermal uh, and fluid systems and 385 for HVAC and refrigeration uh, as you can imagine, the thought of getting to be familiar with hundreds of pages of information is daunting to say the least. Uh, also, having looked through this handbook since it's released, I found that while some of the material provided in it is excellent and even a great improvement over other references, there are many serious gaps and the handbook preface clearly states that. Uh, while the handbook contains material that may be helpful in answering questions on the exam, it quotes, it does not contain all information required to answer every question, theories, conversions, formulas, and definitions that examinees are expected to know uh, have not been included. Uh, you let that sink in. Uh, there are uh, several uh, problems in the practice exam that use equations that are not in the uh, current uh, reference uh, handbook. Uh, it's clear that one of the keys to success on this exam for it, uh, with this exam format will be the familiarity with this handbook and the ability to quickly search and find what you need with ease. With that in mind, I've made that uh, familiarization a priority in our new courses that will give you tools to facilitate your ability to use the reference handbook and lots and lots of practice using it. Another key to success will be addressing the many gaps that exist in the reference handbook. Uh, you're going to need to rely on your memory more than ever with this particular exam. The old Dr. Tom method used the process of assembling the reference materials to improve retention of the information learned. The more effort our students put into preparing and organizing these references, the better they did on the exam. Uh, I have seen this consistently in the many years helping engineers pass uh, the PE exam. But as with the CBT format, essentially makes that effort obsolete. And I've had to devise another method to help these uh, cement these uh, concepts into your memory so that they are ready for uh, you to recall on the, on the exam. Uh, the new method will also require a great deal of effort on your part, but will give you a distinct advantage on exam day. Okay, the, uh, the exam has uh, 80 total questions, just like the uh, current uh, pencil and paper. Uh, the exams uh, have, uh, CBT exams have the traditional multiple choice questions. Uh, they fall into two types, the quantitative, your basic quantitative type problem, but also uh, non-quantitative, NQQs as I call them, uh, that you'll need to answer as well. Uh, however, with the CBT exam, they've also added four additional question types with the ability of the computer. They're referred to by the NCS as AITs, alternate item types, and they include, and you can see these uh, dem demonstrated on the uh, videos uh, that they have provided. One is, a, the new one is a multiple correct option. Uh, it allows you to have multiple have choices, uh, multiple choices are correct and have more than the four answers, the four typical A, B, C, D answers. So you can have more of those. Then a point and click, when you click on a part of a graphic to sort of answer the question. Uh, a drag and drop, click on drag items to match, sort, rank, label, those kinds of things. And then uh, fill in the blank, uh, a space is provided to type a response to the question. Okay. 
Well, time management is a uh, troublesome thing for all of us, especially on tests, and particularly on a test as important as this one to your future. Uh, so it's worth taking a look at the, the challenge of this time management on the CBT. Uh, the total time uh, is going to be nine hours, and during the exam you will have uh, the time remaining is going to be shown on the screen, uh, as I've said earlier, and continues to count down as you work through the exam. That right there will distract you. Um, the nine hours is sort of broken down into uh, the following, uh, two minutes to read and sign the non-disclosure agreement. Of course, if you don't sign, it's over. Uh, you get eight minutes for an on online tutorial on how to navigate the exam screen. Uh, and then you have the eight hours for the exam. Uh, you are going to have about 50 minutes for a lunch break where you decide when you, you decide when you take it. Um, you'll want to do this uh, basically after about four hours uh, where hopefully you've uh, answered most of the, the morning or the first first 40 questions. Um, if you don't take the break, you just lose the 50 minutes. But uh, if you take longer than 50, 51, that one minute extra goes against your eight hours. It does not... Uh, does not uh, add to it. So if you spend more time, you're going to be losing that uh, at the uh, thing second by second. And with the CBT format, you must be vigilant in your time because you have to decide when you take that break, how long you're going to take it, and then get yourself back into the exam facility uh, and uh, begin the process again. It is very important that you know and follow the NCES rules. Uh, complete your registration with your state board and NCES as soon as you can. This is very state specific, so watch all of the rules and uh, requirements. Follow the NCES policies to the letter. Uh, don't get tripped up by a technicality. Uh, take advantage of the available NCES resources. To wrap up our discussion of the CBT exam experience, I'd like to share these thoughts on the keys to succeeding on the exam. One, familiarity with problems and the ability to recognize problem types. Familiarity with the NCES reference handbook, uh, the ability to find needed equations, and to know what's in and what's not in the reference handbook. And don't get stuck on exam day. Use multiple passes answering familiar problems first. My 20 week reviews are specifically designed with a new method to prepare you for the CBT format by not only reviewing major topics and providing lots of practice problems, but also giving you tools to facilitate your ability to use the reference handbook and lots of practice using it. I also address the many gaps that exist in the reference handbook. You are going to need to rely on your memory more than ever with this exam, and the work you do in my course will help cement the needed information in your memory. This new method requires a good deal of effort on your part, but it will give you a distinct advantage on exam day.